Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Victory at Sea Pacific, episode number 17. Um, so I loaded back in and the hammerhead is being attacked by shells. I don't know what's going on. The Probably the more interesting thing will be to see what is going on with the invasion of Komodorsky. So, yeah, I don't think this guy actually has anybody anywhere near him. Probably the closest thing to a fight that's going on right now is the combat of the convoy. The British and the Japanese are engaged right now, and the British with their cruisers should just easily dispatch this, but, you know, there are two destroyers. <laughs> and we've also seen that um, these cargo ships have guns because my submarines couldn't just take them on. Um, in the last one, we also had this bug with Komodorsky where somehow the carrier, I guess all the warships, so yeah, you can actually see it on the map here. They're on the north end of the island, even though they came from the south, and there's no way they, I mean, essentially they just kind of spawned over there accidentally. <laughs> so... Uh, anyways, I've been reading the comments, so it's been a while since I recorded a video, which means that basically there's been time for me to let other videos post and catch up on those comments. And I think that there was a whole, there was it was really a fiasco, the whole Midway thing. So I've been able to give some time to think about how better to handle that. We'll definitely try to handle it better next time. Um... Yeah, lots of little unfortunate things hamper this game for being amazing. I don't want to talk about that every single episode, but I do anyway. But it's just because, you know, you just get so excited during the good moments, and then, uh, you know, little things sour the gameplay. So I don't even know what our grand plan is. Having seen how Midway went, I, I had actually a temptation to start building a whole bunch of Pensacolas. And these Pensacolas would be distributed one to every port, every single port, with the only goal to be to prevent that port from being taken from by airplanes. Because I think even two Pensacolas and one destroyer, I mean, probably two Pensacolas and one destroyer is enough to hold any island against anything which isn't a pure warship attack. What I mean by that is I think two Pensacolas is enough to actually guarantee AA rules the day. Um, we've already seen the Japanese take really terrible losses to my AA. At the end of last episode, just uh, my two Portland class. Um, and then we saw them over Midway. They were taking pretty bad AA losses um, over the base itself. So lots of lots of poor air, you know. Uh, okay. What? Oh, okay. Go on map. Uh, more bombers. Well, what I can do is just watch them die, because I think that that's what's going to happen again. The good news is we're attacking bombers which can repair themselves, or, you know, they can be replaced since they're at a base. But um, what I could do instead is, well, I think that they may not... Oh, what the hell? Oh, yeah, that's right. They may not be able to, or they might have more of a chance of actually attacking me and hitting me if... If I don't go into the tactical map. These guys are going to move in. Our AAA should start up pretty soon. I guess this is three of them. So far the AAA hasn't started, so they might actually get their bombs off. Oh, wait. Two going down immediately. Oh, there's a third one. Boy, that's pretty good AAA for being 1 o'clock in the morning. You'd th you would think that they would have a prayer. <laughs> a prayer of a chance, but no, it's it's that bad. So when the next... <clears throat> I think another wave of bombers is coming in for them. I think I'll just let them go on the, attack, on the strategic map to see if I suffer more losses. I, I don't know if I'd be this cavalier with my cruisers if I you know, knew that they were at risk. In fact, it's obvious that we're being detected. Let's just role play this a little bit and go ahead and push away. So we'll just make our return to um, wherever we have fuel. 250, 
zero. Okay, making a toll. Well, I guess we can also resupply at New Caledonia. Somebody was asking, by the way, about the range. Can anybody scout Guadalcanal? Well, yes, I guess so. These Catalinas, the longest range aircraft I currently have, can barely touch Guadalcanal. Almost can get to Tulagi. Just cannot. Just barely cannot. There's no point in actually attacking either of these unless the Jap- I mean, we can secure them for ourselves for more points, but there's no point in actually doing offensive battle campaigns because I think that you just get them for free by committing your amphibious invasion force. Um, if if there's no, if it's neutral controlled, that I don't think the neutral controlled guns fire at you. I could be wrong about that, but I I thought I took over Guadalcanal when it was neutral in um, my off-camera playthrough, and I believe that that's what happened. I did not need to take out all the stuff. Anyways, three more dive bombers coming in. I wonder how this raid's going. I I haven't looked since I loaded the game, so let's just let that go. Yeah, still plenty of landing troops, so. These tugs, just, they're not going to get there early enough. Let's just hold out and defend at a 2. Um, we did get our B-24 back. While they're distracted, I think it is a pretty good time to launch that and see if we can get lucky. Um, let's prepare in the background another B-24. And eventually, when that when the Kiska one comes back we can launch that. Okay, so let's speed up time. I think 25 should be okay. We basically just need to make sure that we control the spotter when it gets close to Kavyong. Okay, Commodore's occupied. Good, so nothing that we did greatly disturbed what was going on over there. So they have now occupied one of our, the most distant Aleutian Island. And we'll just, yeah, as I was saying, we'll just try to make them pay for that. Oh, wow. It looks like the, cru the cruisers actually did take some damage, some amount, but they killed all those ships. Okay. Enemy aircraft spotted again. Yeah, so let's see what happens if I... Ooh, dive bombers. Well, there's more than six here, because this is two waves. Let me look at it, and then we can either zoom out back to the strategic map to let them come. How many bombers is this actually? Oh, it really is just six. Well, I don't think that they're going to get the job done. I'm curious, though. We can't, we faced the Emilys, which are very, very... I mean, think of them like the Catalina. I think they they have even longer range than the Catalina. I'm almost positive they do. So let's see what happens with these uh, dive bombers. They might get one out in. The Indianapolis, not the luckiest warship, historically. Yeah, I think that they're up. Oh, wait, no, wait, up. Oh. No. Okay, so that and that answers that question. It doesn't look like any. <laughs> they're just completely impervious to <laughs> anything. AAA is way too good. <laughs> oh wow! A convoy. Well, that's just what we wanted. Do we return for it? I think we do. Let's just take out one convoy and then go home. Mission will be absolutely accomplished. Just taking out one. I mean, it's, I didn't. I wasn't sure if we'd even get one. All right, let's climb up so we don't get shot down by AAA, knowing how effective it can be. Ah, uh, then speed up this time a little bit. So that's kind of that's gonna be fun, actually. Oh, enemy aircraft again. <coughs> so six more dive bombers. Let's see what happens if I don't choose to manipulate the uh, the map. So this gives you an idea of what I should be doing. I should absolutely be sending out more scouting parties all over the place. Let's make sure we do that. Plus, I mean, we don't want to be caught flat-footed. Should there be an enemy fleet nearby? 
Just some dive bombers, so... No... No fighters. I don't have to worry about my kingfishers being shot down. Not that that's like the like biggest deal that we'd have to worry about, but I prefer to avoid it if it can be avoided. The only direction I think we're probably safe not to check is behind us. <coughs> Boy, that's actually a lot. No, I think it was counting both of those separate. Sometimes I think that's what happens is these notices go, um, they go up a little bit late. And someone basically just do north. With plenty of fuel to get back. I was being rather conservative about that. Okay. Um, okay, Kiska Defense Force. I believe that's one of the Aleutians. Wasn't I talking about that? Oh, I see, they docked here. Okay, we'll just move right here. Prepare yourself for the monstrous fleet which is out there. We'll probably want to do something about that. Oh, yeah, besides just that one level bomber. Probably not gonna get much done with that. Okay, so here comes <laughs> their dive bombers. We'll see what happens if we don't go into the tactical map. I mean, this is causing me to risk my ships, but oh gosh, we need to control this. He is... yes, he made it over 3,000, which should be enough. I think that'll be enough to guarantee he doesn't die to anti-aircraft fire. So way off in the distance, we have the... Uh... okay, those are all the kingfishers. We do have the dive bombers, but Hopefully if we don't zoom in, it won't be a big deal. As in, maybe they can get a hit, or... I mean, it's weird to root for the Japanese, but... That's what this game makes me do, just so we have a fair fight. Alright, so let's see what we can identify here. 3300 should be high enough. Okay, well... Are we going to identify it? <laughs> Apparently it was not. 3300 not high enough. Note to self. Um, we can easily swing one of these guys around this way. Four fighters. Now that's interesting. Does that mean that there is... Maybe something else in the way? And it looks like those dive bombers were all shut down. <clears throat> I, I don't know. Part of me starts to think when, a, when these things go so horrible. Maybe we should just call this series to a close. But where are those fighters coming from? This could be like the best intel we've gotten to realize that there might actually be a carrier task force in the Bismarck Sea. Because that those are coming at a weird angle. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, those could be coming from Rabul. This is interesting. You can get this guy to turn back. He, uh, let's just say he knows he's been spotted. <laughs> he's going to make a run for it. We'll try our scouting of Kavi Young one more time. Unfortunately, in a way, he's going to lead them back to the cruisers, but I don't know what's going on with these torpedo bombers. I mean, this is a lot. Would they have to? I mean, they could, yeah. They could have those all based at Rabul. Rabul is only a minor port, so 10 aircraft. I don't know. I feel like this convoy is turned towards me, which is weird. Now, will this scout spotter plane get back in time? I don't think so. It looks like he will be caught. There he goes. Okay. And I, they might even have enough ammunition to come after the other spotter. But hopefully we can navigate around this a little bit better this time. 
We need to go to the far side to scout that one. We got 60% of the island still covered. Already covered, I should say. Should, should we so choose, we can actually see how much damage one light bomb does. I don't think it's worth it, but... Okay, let's move in. Get our scouting done. It should be 100%. There it is, 50 war bonds. Now it's 100%. We are taking flak. Okay, wow. So the enemy flak appears to be just as effective, even at maximum altitude. This one just blew me away. I wonder if they've made adjustments. So the game is continuously being patched. I think I've expressed that before, but I feel like that bears repeating that, yeah, the game is being worked on, as in the developers are active in trying to fix all these little bugs that we see. And that's the really good news, you know, we see that, okay, yeah, you know, there's a lot of imperfections. But the most important thing is that they they can be fixed. <laughs> so. Alright, where was this? I guess they did completely clean that out. So we're going to go ahead and move down here to support one of these actions. We're bouncing all around, we're not doing anything, but the SAG should be, wow, it was way off. Where the hell is our surface action group? Wow. I didn't realize they were that far behind. <laughs> but that's okay. Alright, so we're going to have a big showdown then. It'll be all these cargo ships, tankers, ammunition ships. I hope that we have plenty of ammunition. It does look like we're in good shape there. The Portland has fired her guns at was it Marshall Islands? Yeah, it was, to take down the defense of Marshall Islands. But otherwise, the Indianapolis hasn't fired a shot yet. She has her full ordnance. And three fighters are here, so maybe they did lose one to AAA, which is something. We didn't find anything in this little path down here, this spotter, which means that more than likely these are aircraft out of Rabul. But the ones coming from the inner Bismarck Sea in between, well, south of Kaviong. Oh, their fighters could be from based from Kaviong. Okay, that that makes sense. That makes more sense. <laughs> let me just, before we speed up time a bunch, let me see if there's anything else I should be paying attention to. Well, hey, it's great that the British are out there and getting, getting the job done. Hmm. I mean, these convoy convoys are actually kind of in a precarious place. We're at 1,300 war bonds. We ought to make sure we're you know, progressing the war effort. I wonder if it's worth... I think it's going to be worth to upgrade Marshall Islands. I just don't want to do that. Ah, this is really tough. Okay, so that de he's definitely based out of Kaviong. <laughs> we will have torpedo boats to deal with as well. Um, I think I'll wait for the fight icon, the fight uh, graphic to, to be pulled up. Oh, Sub-Zero 1. Okay, so Sub-Zero 1, one of the things we need to do with her is get her upgraded. For five war bonds, it's absolutely worth it. <laughs> Give her the radar. All right. Out you go, let's get you to redock at Johnston Atoll. And I think we sent a sub to each one of these first three islands. So the, the next sub, heck, I'm actually thinking the next sub should go north. If we were able to knock out, oh, in the meantime, by the way, I think our aircraft was destroyed without my knowledge. <laughs> That's okay. I don't think that these bases would have much. Okay, we have early warning, so I'm fine with everybody but Atu taking on some extras. Let's give these guys a Dauntless as well. Or maybe it would be a Catalina. I'm trying not to be too biased. Let, let me think. You would probably actually get a whole squadron. If you have any air base at all, you would, you would get a whole squadron. But the thing is, we probably don't have a whole air base up here. What we could do is, first of all, do they seem like they're moving towards a two? 
If they're moving towards a two, then we should upgrade Kiska. It's gonna take too long, but ah, uh, it's just it's gonna take too long. I, I said it myself. All right, I'm gonna move sub one, the USS Drum, our original submarine. I'm gonna move her to Midway, and I, my goal, is to allow her to react to activity in the Lucia, uh, the Aleutian Islands. Should the Japanese persist up there? Hmm. And we only have a sub here. And Carrier Task Force Able needs to get her plane swapped out. We already have a carrier waiting there. So we can get one of our Carrier Task Forces formed now. That's nice. Oh, the battle has begun. Oh my gosh. Pause. Well, there was no notification that I remember. Maybe I dismissed something. Let's get to the fight then. Oh my gosh, they're like really close. Like that's really close. Let's move away because we want to use our range as one of our advantages. All right, so where are they? They are, well, they're over there. That's, I don't know what I was seeing. This is not nearly as bad as I was thinking it would be. Whoa, where? Did they, I think they already sank some air, what, some, what? Where? It's, just, it's on an escape trajectory. <laughs> just getting to the moon. <laughs> All right, whatever. Uh, don't want to dwell on these things any longer. It's not worth it. Well, move towards this fleet, since this is probably the fleet that you should be moving towards. And let's just stay in the action here. And I think that we're going to be okay. Are they turning around? Like, what are they doing? I don't know. This is a bit bizarre, especially because our, you know, our scout planes are not that far away either. And there's a fleet that way? What the heck's going on? So we know there's a fleet this way. Let's just head in this direction. No, that's the, that's the wrong one. Huh. I, you know what, I like this. I have to say, I really like it that we can't tell exactly where they are. Although we're in battle, so maybe we would know. We just saw red highlighted stuff earlier. Yeah, now it's like they're right there. Well, whatever. We'll just move forward until we find them. I think we're starting to see them now. Nope, those are my movement dots. Huh. Well, let's pretend that my radar has actually got them and that they are over here and we will continue to pursue. The hell is going on here, Portland? Okay, that that's definitely going on. So let's move this way, perpendicular. I have no idea what's going on with this. These guys are suicidal. I think we destroyed the PT boats already. And now we can just sit and watch as these ships are just blown to pieces. And we have uh, turned slightly to make sure that they don't close range too quickly. I'm not too worried about it, but, you know, why take any damage unnecessarily like we did with the Chicago? I guess it was not the Chicago herself, but the Northampton's destroyer which took damage completely unnecessarily. I like that screen rattle. It's pretty cool. Pokemaru, the luckiest ship alive. She already took hits, so it's not really that lucky. She probably has tons of casualties and scrambling to control the damage and the flooding. But boy, we cannot hit her, can we? We have her completely bracketed. Man, just overshot. 
There it is. Okay, she's down. Move on to the next one. The McCall is... I think this is mutiny. Let me quickly... I didn't... I shouldn't have done that, but I need to, to go to fleet to make sure that we're in full attack mode. We are. Please don't... Okay, so I don't know what happened there. Just unpause. We'll let them keep fighting. In fact, rejoin formation, and let's move back this way. So we do want to take out that last ship over there. And this is a great victory. Hey, you know what? We, we lost some things. We lost, uh, well, basically we only lost Komodorsky, I think. We haven't lost any ships lately. Wow, that is incredible how that ship did not get destroyed immediately <laughs> not sure where they're firing I have taken control so yeah okay let's let's, let's fire ourselves there we go there's some hits and those are probably going to be some hits if they land where I just clicked. They did. That might be not a hit. It was. Okay. Get her done. These oil tankers are tough cookies. They are not lightly sunk. But this one's a, a goner for sure. In fact, I probably should start targeting the other one, knowing that she's still in good fighting condition. Seemed to have predicted well. Good, good, good. Put some damage on her. Ah, just shy, and the next one should hit. That's good. Probably finish off the Shohomaru. Saishimuru, all kinds of ships here. Finish her off. Other people already fight. Oh, what a! Cri it must be a critical hit. There is chances for those, which is realistic, right? Kind of like that. Finish her off. And the other one taking damage. She's already. Looks like she's flooding, taking on water. Holy cow. She's not in good shape, and that is very loud. Oh boy. This is good. I mean, it, this gives the Portland some success to write home about. Obviously, great from a lot of standpoints. We've done very good damage to the uh, Japanese economy. This is a huge number of oil tankers. If they were carrying oil especially, this is just really damaging. Okay, so I don't care so much about the PT boats. If they're nearby, I don't mind... Oh. I see, there's another convoy. Well, I think we're gonna have to go get them. How is our fuel though, situations? Situation, yes, we have enough to get them. We're gonna be cutting it close, but next question is what is their, what does it look like this fleet is doing? Yeah, so what I want Atu to actually do instead is bring up some fighters. gives ourselves two, just two. Um, just trying to be very fair about it. I don't think two is going to do anything. We'll give this guy either two bombers or two, uh, maybe a bomber and a fighter. That's fine to me. I don't think the bombers are going to get anything done anyway, so it's just kind of a joke. <laughs> why, why, why waste the time? So I think I'm going to call this episode to a rather early conclusion, just because uh, I need to. <laughs> and this is kind of a nice lull in the storm. We are going to chase after this other convoy. I might as well just give them the order to attack, and we can do this from the from the strategic screen. Um, it doesn't. Wow, that's interesting. Spotter. Oh, they must have just departed from Rabul. I thought they flew through from somewhere else. 
Uh, this group has turned down. Okay, so knowing that, let's plot an intercept course. Give ourselves something to do. So we're going to let the Portland class uh, convoy, which I mean convoy, task force, task force 22, finish off these convoys. This convoy, I don't know if it was one or two, but very fortunate. Hey, this is exactly what these guys were tasked with doing. Kind of makes me feel good about the order that I gave them to begin with. Remember, it was originally go down here, look for convoys, and sink them. And this is exactly how we got fortunate enough that it's exactly what happened. My triangulation here doesn't look quite right. So depending on where they're actually moving. I don't think I'll enter this combat. We'll just let that one go. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know why. It just looks crazy. Why is it... They don't have any ability to attack me at all. I mean, they have merchant ships against heavy cruisers. <laughs> Although I actually don't know if the Portland class were considered heavy cruisers. Were they? Do you know what that? I don't know. It doesn't matter. They were cruisers. And the distinction is not that important anyway. Who knows? I mean, I have asked myself this and rule the waves constantly. What really is the distinction between light cruisers and heavy cruisers? I don't know. One oil tanker is down, three ammunition sh those three ammunition ships probably still less important than the one remaining oil tanker. <laughs> I mean if this is realistic and we're worried about oil, or Japan at least would be worried about oil. <coughs> so I was hoping to finish that battle before ending this. Okay, it looks like one more down. We haven't taken any casualties yet or any damage whatsoever. Um, you just lead them a little bit more. I'm a little nervous. Okay, good. And now you head home. In fact, what we can do is maybe use these guys as bait so the Task Force 19 can get into position. Or maybe if they... Well, two cruisers and the light cruisers probably better than my two cruisers and three destroyers. Especially because fun... This is actually really cool. We are running a little bit low on ammunition. And the Portland's, uh, I mean, that's not just a little bit low, that's extremely low. I might be able to transfer ammunition between the two. I think there's a way to do that. Let me investigate that off camera as well. But uh, other than that, yeah, we have a kind of a fun little situation where the Portland has been deployed against so many different targets uh, without actually getting refit. Or not refit, but rearmed. So that's good. That's fun. The logistics is creeping in a little bit. And I enjoyed that. But for now, I guess I'll call this to a close here. So thanks for watching, and until the next episode, take care.